just sharing the thing off here yeah <clears throat> hello everyone assalamu alaikum my name is zainab isaji and uh, i would like to thank you all on behalf of team octara and our ceo jamil jangira for participating in this book launch her way to the top by hera ali followed by a webinar in which she is going to give you the insights of the book uh the author and the presenter of this webinar hera ali she is from uk and she is running a company by the name of advancing your potential she is also the md of the women international empowerment events and uh, she has been featured in uh, a lot of uh, local and international newspapers and she, uh, and recently she has been uh, interviewed by the former uh, bbc uh, presenter dan perry and uh, now i would like hera to take the hot seat hera over to you hello hello everybody assalam alaikum i am really really excited to be here today with you all because as you know i am in lockdown and so are you actually pakistan is no longer in lockdown now but in the uk i'm in lockdown and i haven't seen people since weeks so i get excited when i do virtual webinars even if i'm seeing you virtually um It's exciting because I was supposed to be doing a book launch this year in Pakistan with a conference in Islamabad, but of course, as we all know, COVID happened. So now we're doing an online book launch brought to you by Uptara, and I am really grateful to uh, Team Uptara for putting up such uh, an amazing effort in organizing this whole thing. They have put in a lot of effort, and it was done in a very nice, organized way. I literally didn't have to do anything at all. so thank you to them for uh, doing such an amazing job uh these are some of my social media handles um giving me stay potential twitter at advancing you instagram at advancing you and linkedin i am really active as hira ali career coach and i would absolutely love it if you would follow me on linkedin or on twitter or facebook um and if you have any queries you can get back to me and this is my not so little introduction but I'm just going to give you a brief. I think Zainab has already done a very good introduction, but I am going to share a bit more about myself. I am an accredited International Coach Federation coach. I am a licensed NLP practitioner, and I am running four projects right now. One is my own company, Advancing Your Potential, um, and then there is um, International Women Empowerment Events. Last year, we had a launching conference in Maldives, and this year we were supposed to have a conference in Pakistan and in Dubai. but of course that had to be postponed um and also the co-founder of uh, career excel which is an international women leadership program uh, it's an online program and the co-founder of the gray area which captures the experience of ethnic minorities working in the public and private sector um and i have been featured in alhamdulillah a lot of places particularly in the past four years my podcast eight minutes of learning hirali which i'm going to resume soon uh, i was in working on it for a long time but it has also been featured in the huffington post um and i'm a mentor at many different organizations like um the sherry bear foundation and you know nhs uh, and also the recipient of top 100 lift effect star award and i was called, you know named as uh, women of media last year highly commended women in media last year my book uh, as you all know which we are launching today in pakistan Uh, it is called Her Way to the Top: A Guide to Smashing the Glass Ceiling. It was originally launched uh, launched as Her Way to the Top: The Glass Ceiling is Thicker Than It Looks. But uh, a lot of influencers and readers and speakers and my publisher thought that you know it, it, the book is really positive and tells you about all these positive steps and strategies. So we should uh, rename the the subtitle. So the title was renamed last year in December and was released this year as Her Way to the Top. Uh, a guide to smashing the glass ceiling and has received amazing reviews from some of the influencers uh, globally which i am really really thankful for um and it continues to make it to a lot of different international and local news and magazines and uh, last year i was also featured in a book i was one of the few okay only pakistani and very few muslim women who was featured in a book called girls who do you want to be alongside global influencers like ariana huffington reshma sirjani claire shipman sally crockett and many more um and i'm very passionate about empowering women 
um, and ethnic minorities. And of course, I do trainings for men too. In fact, uh, I started my career back in Pakistan 10, uh, around 14 years ago, and that's when I used to train more men than I would train women, because most of my leadership programs had had 90% women and very 90% uh, men and very few women. Um, and then when I moved to Dubai, it was again the same scene. It was more men than women, but gradually I see now we have lots and lots of women uh, in, in, in the management, in, in, in different departments, in different organizations, in leadership positions. Of course, when I moved to London, I started noticing a specific set of challenges holding women back, um, which I had been noticing in Dubai and in Pakistan. So because of that, I realized that, you know, there were some challenges, you know, when I started working in Pakistan 14 years ago, and uh, I started working for Murray and Phipps, and then I was with Dex Pharma for a number of years, um, and I started this training program called Revitalize and Rise, and I had noticed that there were certain challenges that were holding women back in their career, and there were internal and external challenges. And I thought that was a lot to do with the background or with the culture or with the country you're in, because of course, you know, most Asian countries and most Muslim countries, uh, we do see that women aren't as actively engaged in the workforce. But then I moved to Dubai. Uh, when I moved to Dubai, I noticed the same challenges, even though right now I was training about 85% expats, and most of these expats were from countries like UK and Europe. Um, oh, is, is there a question? Okay, let's see. Uh, Zainab, is there a question? Uh, can I can I just wait until I take the question? Okay. Um, so uh, there, are, there are your voices. Yes. Yes, Zainab, go ahead. Here are your voices a bit low. Oh. Just, yeah. Okay. Can you hear me now? Is yes, better, better. Or... better. Okay, so uh, when I was in Dubai, taking from where I last stopped, uh, when I was in Dubai, I started noticing the same challenges holding women back in Nigeria. career. Um, and again, I thought this was to do with the culture and the background of the country that I'm in. But then when I moved to London four years ago, and I was like, oh my God, you know, I moved to this city where it's an empowered, amazing, developed city where women will be breaking glass ceilings and, you know, there'll be lots of women at, at the top. Uh, and the same problems wouldn't be there. However, I did notice, unfortunately, that even in London, I mean, the first week there was a women's march going on. And I said, what is this march about? And they were basically fighting for equal pay and, you know, different other things. So that's when I realized that, you know, it's not just a problem in Pakistan or, or Dubai or, you know, in, in Asia. It's a, it's a global issue where lots and lots of women are facing internal external challenges um so i decided to do a survey and then i surveyed 300 women across the globe and i asked them about the top 300 challenges holding them back now these are some of the places where i have been published in the past um four years and um, i'm really excited because since i have been in lockdown the last 60 days uh, of course, I haven't been going out of training or doing much, but I have been doing a lot of writing and I have been published in about 30 more places in the last two months. And I've been talking about presenteeism and working from home and lots of different topics. Um, so anyways, welcome to uh, officially the book launch of uh, Her Way to the Top. In just three or four minutes, I am going to share a video with you, which has been um, prepared by myself and Uptara. And uh, we're going to officially launch her way to the top guy to smash the glass ceiling. Uh, and I see lots of familiar faces. Okay, good. What I do want to know there is if you can tell me where you are from until we wait. If you could quickly tell me your name, <coughs> which city you're from, which company you're from, uh, what are you hoping to achieve from the webinar, that would be absolutely fantastic. I think there are some people waiting in the room. Have they been admitted? Okay, good. So let's see. Can I get any 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 comments from anybody? Can you hear me? Can you see me? What's happening at your end? Are you in lockdown? Are you at work? What's going on? Yeah, I think uh, here, you know, um, something is not, um, the voice is not coming very clear. Uh, you know, either, um, you know, you're, there's an echo or um, it's, um, you know, you need to improve your, 
you know, there's a lot of base over here, see. Oh, okay. I mean, this is what I have been. Uh, you know, anybody else having a similar issue? Or is it just me? Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. yes. Ali, my name is Adil Ahmed and I am a correspondent for Akkara and hopefully we'll be interviewing you soon over email and Jamil Janjua sahab is my mentor in this field. So, my question the title of your book is extremely provocative. Okay. Smashing the glass ceiling. Now, the very word smash kind of denotes an us versus them mindset. And it's collision, you know, it's sort of symptomatic of a collision. And collisions make for explosions. So, if you are chipping away at the glass ceiling, then how do you say it? You know, and today, we have just come off a webinar at 12 with an international audience. And there, this is exactly the issue that was being discussed. KG, emotional intelligence to hai, ye us versus them mindset jo hai, this needs to be replaced by a win-win situation. Okay, thank you so much, Adil sir. I'm going to answer your question right away. Uh, hai, aap jo keh rahe, I think that's a good point. Uh, internationally and globally, uh, this is a term which is used by women to like smash the glass ceiling because there is an invisible glass ceiling, not just for women, but also in London, for example, it is for ethnic minority men and women. Uh, jo, the, the, the language used, I think maybe, of course, I think in terms of Pakistan, it might be a bit provocative. Internationally, this is, the, this is sort of the term which is used in order to encourage women to break the glass ceiling, to smash it. I do understand what you're talking about in terms of taking both men and women hand by hand. And I'm not sure if you have seen a lot of my posts on LinkedIn and Facebook. I am a huge advocate of you know, in this together, I do not at all at any point in time propagate this, that it should be them versus us, because I have a, personally have a lot of male allies in my own family, in my own network, in my own circle, and some of them, in fact, joining uh, the network. I don't know if Zafar Zap is here, and I think I see Nivelle is here, and they're very senior people who have really supported me in my career. And I personally feel that in, in especially Asian countries, if you want women empowerment to work, then you really need to involve men in the conversation. It can't be done without them. It can't be, you, you can't say that it is us versus them. It's, it's not an emotional campaign. Um, and this is something which, and this is specifically, uh, obviously, a, a webinar for Pakistan. So I'm going to also say this, that I believe in collaborative dialogue. I do believe in, in, uh, you know, sitting down and working collaboratively rather than blaming and finger pointing. So if you would, uh, you know, if you read some of my articles or if you follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter, you would see that I am a strong, strong advocate of what you're saying and I completely agree with it. Thank you. Would you like some more questions? Uh, <laughs> yes, maybe one or two more if, if possible. Uh, and Zainab, if you could handle the questions and if you could uh, unmute them and see if there's a question raised, I would be really grateful because... Uh, okay, whoever wants to ask a question, they can raise their hand and I will unmute them. Asha, Zainab, can you hear me properly? Yeah. Okay, maybe I'm on Facebook. That's why, you know, there's a issue with Facebook. Um, I'll try to get back on LinkedIn then. Okay, so... I'm what are provocative? provocative issue hai ye, and you know they, it's a burning issue so you know as much discussion as possible would be great yes no absolutely this is that uh, you're right and this is uh, something which i have been advocating for since, since weeks and months and years uh, okay and just give me one second i'm going to try and fix this issue if possible uh kitab Love to read your book. Is it available locally in Pakistan? Uh, to nahi, but a second. It will be available. Let me, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to fix the mic issue right now in case if people can't hear me on Facebook.
So I think now is is it better, Jamil Janjua sir? I fixed uh, some things at my end. It's, uh, much it's great right now. It's great. It's perfect actually. Okay, but I sorry. hope you know everybody else is also you know having the, the same issue. I hope not. <laughs> Acha, so I'm going to now. I think it's about time. Maybe in another two minutes, if there are no more questions on this. Yeah, there is a question okay, by Nivale. If, if we don't address the inequality now, when will we? Yes, absolutely. Of course, I think that's absolutely right, Nivale. And Nivale has been a, a staunch supporter, and Zafar Smani Saab is also here. I can see, which is really nice. They have all been very strong male allies in my circle. In fact, I had a, a book launch last, a book launch anniversary last month, and in that anniversary, we did discuss how important it is to be able to include. Uh, everybody and and i talked about the role of government the role of media the role of male allies and the role of senior leadership and i think everybody needs to be included in this dialogue and if we work together we can achieve a lot i am totally against this this whole concept of us versus them because this never works particularly in asian countries or in any country to be honest because if you start blaming and if you start being aggressive then nothing is achieved so i am uh, strongly believe that collaboration is really important and nivel was also part of that and he was uh, one of the panel speakers and he talked about the role of government because i feel it's not just uh, the role of organizations and male allies it's about you know the role of men at home the role of men at work it's about senior leadership how involved they are it's about lots of different things which are really 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 important uh okay let me turn off turn on my video just give me one second i have so many boxes open at the same time so uh are, are there any more questions um zena or should i am, am i ready to like share the i think we should start the video Okay. Okay. What is this happening? Screen sharing has stopped. Okay. I'm going to start my video first. More. So hopefully my video has been started and I am now going to be sharing the video Are there any questions in the background if there are then please feel free to discuss those questions with me or put them forward because I think it's a good time to discuss all this right now um and it's an important topic which does need Well, if you want a filler, I can help out. No, but ye ye basically ek to ye hai ke why? I mean, the moment you talk about a glass ceiling, you are bringing it to top of mind. You know, consciousness. Yes. Ki wo ek glass ceiling hai. Why should you acknowledge any glass ceiling? And why are you so insecure in the knowledge that merit will work? Merit transcends all. And do you think uh, there is a increasing number of individuals uh, in leadership roles, males perhaps, who are now more open to merit as the deciding factor? Well, I think wo other sab you have said a very good question. I think merit is really important. But I'll tell you what, I was one of the person who really, really believed in this that it should purely be on the basis of merit, whether it's men or women. But you have to understand that women have not been given equal opportunities in a lot of countries. So they haven't been given that sort of experience and exposure, and you know they don't have that skill. So in that case, it will always be negatively skewed against the women because you know, when women do not have that sort of uh, background, if they don't have that experience, if they have not that expertise, and then I will be talking about something called, uh, you know, I will be talking about something called. Um, The, the internal challenges which women across the globe typically face from, and these internal challenges are important. But in that scenario, me, 
there has to be a push from the, and especially, I also be discussing Pakistan's gender gap. If I go back to my presentation, I'm just trying to uh, now open the, Oh, this is not really, there has been some, okay, where is the video? Hmm, sorry, so I think all these things are really, really important in terms of, um, just bear with me, I'm just trying to see what yeah, is. Yeah, let me, let me just, let me just run another thought process by you. जब एक वो कहते हैं ना जी कि माँ की कदमों के नीचे जन्नत होती है बच्चों के लिए जी तो जब वो माँ का रोल में होती है तो जन्नत होती है कदमों के नीचे लेकिन जब माँ जो है एग्जेक्यूटिव रोल में आ जाती है ना तो उसके जो परसोना है उसके नेचर जो है उसमें एक देस अ हार्ड एज व्हिच इज यू नो मैंडेटरी य so, yeah. uh, do you think uh, fulfilling the first role and then coming on to a second role, which is executive in nature, uh, would help in balancing out the two? I mean, there's a lot of uh, discussion going on around the induction of women in the Pakistan Air Force, you know, as fighter pilots. Take so care. that goes against that goes against the natural grain of womanhood, you know, the pulling of the trigger. <laughs> Okay. Uh, may I just, I'm going to answer your question. Let me uh, share this video, hopefully. Uh, and then let me answer these questions once the presentation starts. I don't know why. Have I worked with you and get Spawa, Adil Saab? Sorry? I think were you, uh, were you involved with, with Get Spawa newsletter at any point in time? <laughs> yes, I was. Oh, my God. Do you the remember get, me then? Get Spawa, Life and Times. Do you remember me then? You were you were you were there with me. Uh, we worked on the newsletter with Shazia. Wow, wow, kya baat aagi. Do you know Shazia is uh, Jamil Janjua Saab ne usko train kiya tha. Turned her oh, from uh, raw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was your executive assistant for I think a good 10, 15 years. Uh, Zainab, I would now request you to mute the past participants because I'm playing the video. Can you please tell me if you can hear it? Zainab, can you hear the video? Can you no, see the no, no, I can't hear it. This is, this is turning out to be a bit of an issue. What's going on? Hmm, sorry, this is just uh, no idea what's going on. I'm trying to share the video. Do you, Jenna, you don't have the video at your end, right? Yeah, I do have it. Uh, let me just see what's going on, actually. Share screen. I have no idea why it's not. Meanwhile, um, uh, I'd like to welcome um, Zafar Osmani Saab. Assalamualaikum, Jay. How are you, sir? Thank you, JJ. It was a great pleasure to see uh, people of vintage together in this early morning. Uh, mm -hmm. London, I'm sure, Iraqi, so it must be very, very early. But what a, what a pleasure. I mean, I, I'm so happy. But, you know, I mean, I've already done one, uh, one uh, session this morning. I conducted a training session on why... In, uh, um, um, why people fail in job interviews. It was a very interesting yeah. session. And uh, I was looking forward to Hira's session. Hira is a very uh, dear, dear student of mine uh, from her uh, MBA days. And then, you know, she was also helping me as a teaching assistant for some time. And uh, a brilliant, outstanding girl. And, you know, really inspiration for most of our younger generation professionals. Thank you so much, Zafar Zab. Uh, okay, now it's finally done. Sorry. No, but these are the new things here we are learning, and that's absolutely fine. Uh, this is a technology we will get better with, inshallah, with time. But good. Go ahead. And now it's on. Come on, guys.
so I am now going to continue with my presentation. I would request to all of you to hold your questions for a bit because I have a, a presentation which I want to go through and I have like one or two polls and some focus group discussions which I'll be doing and then I'll be taking the questions right at the end. All right, so Zainab, if you could please kindly mute the participants so that I could continue and go back to the presentation. Sure. Uh, that would be nice. All right, so... Um, All right, so have you, or did you all see the video? Was the sound clear? And you can write in the chat box. Okay, and uh, all right, so everybody was able to see the presentation and everybody was able to you know, see the videos. Now the book launch was officially done last year. And then in the book launch, I talked about um, basically two things. I talked about internal challenges holding women back and I talked about uh, external challenges holding women back. Now, usually what happens is that whenever you're talking about a woman's climb to the top, there are two things discussed. Some women say that it is, you know, it is us and we're holding ourselves back and we need to work on our internal challenges. And there's a set of women that says that uh, it's not us, it's them that's holding us back. Um, and because I worked in three or four different countries, and then I was reaching out to people globally, and I was, I was really talking to hundreds and thousands of people and had experience in working in Asia and Middle East and Europe, I realized that, to be honest, it is not something as simple as, you know, it's their fault or um, it's, it's, it's our fault. It's both faults are equally involved. So I'm going to share a very interesting fact. Basically, what happened in... Asian countries was that when I did the survey, most of the women thought that they were the external challenges that hold it, that held them back in the career. And what were these external challenges? They were basically male dominated industries, misogynist work environments, sexual harassment, workplace bullying for women, and of course, lack of infrastructure. Um, and when I surveyed women from, you know, US and UK and Europe and internationally, most of the people said that it was the internal challenges that held them back. And this was, in fact, a very, very interesting part of the research that people in Pakistan, for example, in my own country, if you see a lot of women are doing brilliantly, those people who are in their careers are doing brilliantly. And these people, most of them do not suffer from imposter syndrome. And I'll be discussing most of these things um, in the next few slides, what exactly are they? Asian women do not have a confidence issue. Asian women, and for women in Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, Middle East, most of their challenges are to do with the external challenges. And in Europe and in Europe and UK and all the countries, rest of the countries, the challenges are more internal. So basically, talking about Pakistan, the reason why we need to work on this because it is really sad. Gender gap right now in Pakistan ranks Pakistan third to last on the 20. 20 global gender gap index, right? Pakistan also ranks the lowest in the region and the gap remains in terms of economic participation opportunities in labor force, in senior leadership roles held by women in, in politics and uh, in education. So basically a gender gap is measured by four things, uh, political participation, education, leadership and health sector. And in all four sectors, the women in Pakistan are not doing well. And this is really sad because I am from Pakistan. My roots are in Pakistan. I studied from Pakistan. And there's so many other brilliant women who are doing amazingly, who have careers, who have, who have families, who are married with kids and are doing exceptionally well. They are maintaining the families and they are doing a really good job at the career. So first of all, we do need to have that notion that, you know, Women cannot. Women can be nurturing. Women can be amazing moms because that is a God-given talent. talent given to women that they are multitaskers. So what they do need, of course, and this is what I'm going to concentrate more on in countries like Pakistan because that's what my research and my survey evidenced. That we need to now facilitate an environment in which and and give way to a mindset in which these women can climb the top and in which these women can participate equally because I know so many women who are doing brilliantly but why is this not reflected in the gender gap because that's my main frustration so um, in fact we're also having a conference this year which was uh, of course um, cancelled or postponed until next year 
Uh, and that is the main issue. Why exactly is the gender gap not closing? We were one of the few countries to have a female prime minister, right, who was, who was uh, a woman, right? We had been a Zibuto. And it really gives me a lot of pride. And apart from any political views or discussions, I don't want to get into all that, but, but it does give me a lot of pride to know that there have been famous people from my country who have been doing exceptionally well across the globe and who have, who have earned a great name. If there are these women there, then what is it that we can do to improve the gender gap? And this, of course, specifically is a presentation which is not aimed at uh, health and education or politics, which of course is something uh, in my area and in my domain, but I'm not going to discuss this today. Today, I'm going to discuss about how women can smash the glass ceiling and how they can actually get to the leadership positions, because right now there are very few women in the leadership positions. Um, there has been evidence across the globe that when you get more diversity in the boardroom, when you get more diversity in the leadership positions, organizations have performed well. And I don't want to start gender battle debates here, but I did a presentation last week as well in which I talked about some leadership traits which specifically women have. And I'm not saying that women are better leaders than men are, are not. I don't want to start that gender debate. Uh, but what I'm saying is that men have leadership traits which are great and women have leadership traits which are great. And it's about time that we leverage all of these traits and promote women to um, sort of get to the top. And what are these leadership traits? For example, women are really good you know, uh, in empathy, in compassion, in collaboration, in humility, in, you know, work, in, in dividing power and working with everyone. Where are, whereas men are, are good in decisiveness, risk taking, um, you know, they're not afraid of failures. So these are all the characteristics that make great leaders. And I believe that it is about time that countries, particularly in Asia, and particularly I'm concerned about my own country, Pakistan, that we should have more women uh, reaching leadership positions. And we have also seen in the last two months uh, that a lot of the countries that had female leaders did well. And what was the reason? It was because they were more empathetic. Now, uh, coming to Adil Saab's point, and I'm going to uh, answer that later, but coming to your point when you said that women's role is that of you know, a, a nurturing one, a mom's role, and that is the exact reason why women make such great leaders. If you look at all these female leaders, for example, Jacinda Ardern, or if you look at Germany, if you look at Finland, all these countries had leaders who had dealt the crisis with love and empathy, because in crisis, you need decisiveness, you need people who are strong and assertive, but you need a lot of compassion, you need a lot of empathy, and uh, science has also proved that they have, or there are scientific differences in the way males and female brains work, right? So because of that reason, it is very, very important that we um, understand that, um, you know, there are differences, we acknowledge that, and we rev leverage those differences. When I did my survey, some of the top challenges that came out was fear of missing out. Women are really scared, not just in Asia, but globally. They are scared and they are um, of, of all the work-life balance, imbalance, which is going to be created if they start working in region, reaching top level positions, because they fear missing out on their roles as a mom, as a daughter, as, you know, as a wife, uh, and they feel that if they you know, reach for those high level positions, then they might be, be, be missing out on their role, their domestic duties or, or their role at home. And I personally feel I am a mom, I am pretty much a traditionalist. Um, but here is the point which I need to make that you can be an amazing mother and wife and you can also do very well in the career. Yes, there will be times when will you, you will might be taking a career break to look after your children, but that's where the organizations and that's where the government and the roles and the policies need to step up to help these working moms. Because what it happens is the reason why women are not climbing to, uh, to the top is that people are are regarding women exclusively. They think that she's a working professional and they expect her to work as a, as a working professional and they forget the fact that she's also a mother. Or they expect her to work as a mother and they forget the fact that she's working as a working professional. And I think these two factors are important. Billions of dollars are lost when women are not engaged in the workforce at par with men. So this is really, really important that we get women to get over the fear of missing out. And that can only be done by making environments, by changing our mindset, by challenging the misogyny that exists in our culture, uh, sadly speaking, which has stereotyped 
women and have put them in a hole and said that this is what you need to do and you can't get out of it. So this fear of missing out was the number one internal challenge which women across the globe face. That if I, if I uh, am a working professional, I'd be missing out on my duties as a mom, or if I am a mom, then I'm going to be missing out on being a working professional. So this FOMO was the number one challenge. And then the next one was imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome, uh, and please note that most of these internal challenges, okay, most of these internal challenges are uh, basically a result of uh, external challenges. We have been raised in a certain way. We have been exposed to a lot of social conditioning since the time of our births. And I would also like to, because this is a webinar for Pakistan, I would like to say that this is not something which has been encouraged by the religion, because if we talk about religion, the religion has seen extremely empowered, powerful women. I was reading an article in HPR yesterday um, and by Oxford University in which they had talked about powerful Muslim women. Muslim women who have, I don't know how many of you have heard about Kuala Binte Azwat, who was a female warrior who was actually fighting in the battle alongside the, alongside the men. So she was a female warrior. She was in the army. So jo abhi hum baat karenge, you know, navy, navy army mein women cannot come. So this is not something which has been happening right now. All this, what has been happening has been propagated or encouraged by the culture. There have been women in Islam, in our religion, 1400 years before, who have been equally involved in politics. If you see examples of Hazrat Aisha, if you see examples of, of Hazrat Khatija, they were all empowered business women who were involved in politics, who were involved in government affairs. These women also went to the wars. These women went to the battles. When our religion does not create discrimination, then why do we create discrimination? I went to uh, the British Army parade a month ago and I met this very esteemed Islamic scholar. And I said to him, and I said to him that there's a lot of debate about you know, women empowerment, especially in, in countries um, like Pakistan or you know, India, Bangladesh, all these Muslim countries. Uh, so I want to find out from you what exactly it is that women can do. And he said, the only thing women cannot do is that they can't lead the prayer. And this is something which even women in the churches can't do. I mean, this is something which is there in all religions, whether it's Christianity, uh, or Judaism or whatever religions we're talking about, women do not read congregation there. So this is not something specifically to Islam. So that is the only thing which women can't do. Other than that, women can head countries, women can be in the army, in the navy, it can, they can fly planes, they can do whatever they want to while achieving a balance. And if you want women to achieve the balance, again, I would say we need to step up and we need to improve the external challenges. Anyways, coming back to imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome is basically the feeling of inadequacy that we um, are not good enough. We are not get good enough to be in that particular role. And because women have been raised and they have been socially conditioned to believe that, oh, their role is at the home only and they can't really go anywhere else and they can't do anything else, they have developed this internal sort of inadequacy and this feeling of, I am not good enough. And that is a huge challenge, especially in the Western countries that I am not good enough. What if people find out that I am not, I'm fake? What if people find out that I don't deserve this position? Um, and that is all about internal challenge. Another internal challenge is perfectionism because the women are perfectionists and especially if, you know, if you're a type A man and women, they would be, uh, you know, they will be perfectionists in their role. They would want to do everything, whether it is their child's uniform or it's a birthday party, whether it's their work assignment, they will go all out to make sure that everything is, uh, you know, everything has been, has been looked at from every, every angle. And that is exhausting and that's frustrating. So I often tell in my webinars to uh, take it easy and to also, you know, there's certain tasks in which just being good enough is perhaps uh, except you don't have to be 100% perfect all the time. And of course, there's time poverty, of course, women across the globe. And of course, time poverty is something which I can't say is gender specific. Men are also suffering from time poverty, but particularly working women or even women at home, they uh, are suffering from time poverty, acute time, like a majority of the women who are working 4% do not have any time to themselves. And about, I think 25% in the survey conducted said that they have only about one hour to themselves every day. So there is an acute time poverty across the globe. 
Then women are afraid of self-promoting. That is a major issue. They are, uh, they will not step up because they have imposter syndrome, because they have perfectionism, and because they fear failure, they fear judgment. They will refrain from stepping up. They will refrain from self-promoting. Men, on the other hand, are quite good at, at self-promoting. This comes to them naturally. This is a trait which comes to them naturally. But women, of course, uh, are shy. Anything which even slightly hints at self-promotion is going to have women running a mile away from, uh, you know, from, from sharing their achievements. And then, of course, there is a huge fear of vulnerability because women are traditionally seen as weak. Um, and they, um, you know, there's this very interesting thing I've written in my book as well. I quoted uh, Valerie Young, who is a reviewer of my book, and she says that the problem with women is that they suffer from strong stereotype issues. So, for example, if Somebody is not driving well, right? We all know the stereotype. Women do not know how to drive. Or if a woman gets aggressive at work, oh, women are too emotional. Women get angry, you know? So these are stereotypes which they, we have been grown up with, right? And these stay in our mind. For example, it was really sad. I was talking to a woman and she said, uh, you know, a reasonable looking woman and she said, I'm always very conscious because, you know, I, I don't want to dress up too much at work because I don't want people saying that, oh, she got promotion because of her looks. And that's a, a sadly a very, very sad thing in our culture still where you are promoting or you, you know, you are, women are based on, on their looks or the way they are, you know, the, the way they're looking. You see a lot of misogynist and sexist ads in which you see that, you know, beautiful women apply or young women should apply. So these are all the things which, of course, make women um, scared, uh, fear, vulnerability. They don't want to appear as weak. And of course, uh, the book in the book I wrote this example that this woman said that if I don't do well, and she was a barrister in New York, and she said, if I don't do well, they will not say that Lucy doesn't have what it takes to do well. They will say that. Um, okay. They will say that, uh, you know, um, women uh, doesn't have what it takes to basically, uh, you know, run the company or be a barrister. So it's not about the women. She is representing the entire, entire sort of, or sort of gender. And she's, she has a lot of burden to represent the entire gender. So if she doesn't do well. People will not say that you are not doing well. People will say, well, you know what? Uh, it's basically something which... Uh, which, uh, you know, women can't do well. It's not, it won't be about her anymore. So basically there is a fear of vulnerability. And then, uh, okay, I, I don't know why I see my screen sharing has been paused. Okay. Has my screen sharing been paused, guys? You're okay, but, you know, as far as we're concerned. Okay. Uh, can you see the screen? Is it has it been paused? No. Yeah, it has the book on it, and it says vulnerability. Okay, sounds good. Um, uh, yeah. All right. So this is really important. Um, and that's the reason why women are scared to admit that they have been wrong, or they're scared to admit that they are not doing well or they have uh, some problems going at home or if they are not able to uh, do a, you know have a, a complete work life balance because they feel that they will be judged at work they will they are afraid of failing they are afraid of succeeding so it's actually quite tricky for women i mean uh, and then of course managing stress um, and i'm not saying that that at this particular point in time we all are stressed men and women are stressed but Working women have the additional burden of managing household chores. It has already been proved in a research done by Harvard Business Review very recently last week that women's productivity has declined since the lockdown. There have been fewer research articles being produced because, of course, they are responsible for working at home, household chores, and you know they don't have any help coming in. They are responsible for homeschooling, which is a huge thing, a thing these days in internationally in the UK. They are managing the homeschools, they're managing the, you know, the food, the cleaning, the laundry, and they're managing their work. So of course they will be stressed, right? And they are, and it's not just that. I also often explain that you have to understand that women are often really, you know, moving from literally changing diapers to 
you know, going back to the slide and making strategic presentations. So can you imagine that, that thought process, which is shifted when you're literally feeding a mouth or cleaning, uh, you know, a, you know, a child, and then you suddenly go back to making these, creating these strategic presentations. So these things are, I mean, these are things which you need to take into account that they are, and I'm not, uh, hear me right now, I am not saying that women should not be managing homes. I manage my home. And I've been doing it for years, right? Uh, luckily, I'm married to a husband who is a feminist and who really supports me uh, at work and, you know, with respect, a lot of different things as a result of which I think I'm able to succeed in my career. So again, uh, I'm going to be talking about the role of male a little later. And then, of course, there are male-dominated industries. Research has proven that women have the chances of women uh, speaking in a male-dominated environment is 75% less as compared to the female environment. So this is, again, something which we do need to take in, in, into account, uh, you know, mm -hmm. especially in male-dominated areas. And I know I have worked in Pakistan for a number of years. I worked in Pakistan for about seven or eight years. And luckily, I was surrounded by men who were very respectful and who were male allies. But I do know that this is not the culture throughout. And in some organizations, unfortunately, there is a misogynist work culture. Most organizations uh, have a misogynist culture. Some organizations don't, and some of the males are really good. They are, you know, you you don't have a problem working them. They really encourage women. They really encourage women. I have so many men in my circle who fall in that category, and I'm very grateful for those men in my life. Um, but yes, when there is male dominated industry, women, of course, do. Um, get a setback because, of course, there are more men and they are conscious of all these things, imposter syndrome, fear of vulnerability, fear of judgment, fear of failure, you know, stress, there's time poverty, so everything comes in. Um, and then, of course, it is, you know, if you're the only type in the room, it's not much fun, it can be alienating, it takes a toll on yourself, uh, on, on your, on your self-esteem and performance. And then, of course, there's workplace harassment, which is also there. Uh, and I'm going to talk about it in detail, how to address it, that this is one thing which I think is there in the mind of every woman across the globe. And I think there's hardly any woman who has not been harassed either explicitly or implicitly. Uh, and of course, this harassment, in, unfortunately, in a lot of countries, uh, in a lot of cultures, even in the West, if a woman raises issues or if she tries to call out the harasser, then the blame is actually pinned down on her which is very sad. Um, and then I would say that women also play a role in this. It's not just men, women equally share the blame that if a woman speaks out, they will all say, oh, this is, you know, this is her fault. She probably provoked it. And, you know, even though, again, I would like to, the reason why, because this is a webinar for Pakistan, I would refer that in our religion, the blame doesn't lie with the women. The blame lies with both both men and women say to the believing men to lower the gaze and guard their modesty and say to the believing women to lower the gaze and guard their modesty. So the point being is that we have given everything a lot of religious context, which is actually not a religious, um, religious tree true. This is something which we have been uh, accustomed to because of, of, the, of the culture we are living in, because of the mindset that we are living in. And uh, it's not just to do with sexual harassment, it's also to do with publicly, publicly trashing ideas with the intention to belittle, scoff, dismiss suggestions in meetings, make assumptions and take ill-informed decisions regarding career paths and openly making sarcastic comments and denouncing female team members. So this exists, please don't take this personally. If you don't do it, please pat yourself on your back because I do know a lot of people in here who are amazing, strong male allies. But this is the culture, and I'm talking about globally, that this is happening, so we need to focus on this. And then, of course, the final point is lack of infrastructure and support. We do live in an environment, whether we like it or not, we do live in an environment which has been specifically designed for men. And, you know, there are things which we can do to help working moms and women in general, whether you're a mom or not, uh, which can help support this infrastructure and support. Okay, and you know, uh, without the infrastructure, without the policies, without the system, this is prevalent all over the world. Women are unable to work and achieve unfettered career success because we need a system which prevents harassment, which prevents bullying, which prevents sexism, where laws, rules, and systems are, uh, you know, are equally favorable for men and women. Okay, so I would now like to go back and. If I could ask in the chat box, okay, um, but somehow I don't know why I can't go back to my Zoom, what's happening? 
Um, if I could ask in the chat box, how many people are there in the survey, if you could quickly let me know, what is it that is holding you back in your career? Is it the internal challenges or the external challenges? If you're a man, then you can speak on behalf of your wife, daughter, sister, or female colleague. What is it that you think is holding women back in their career? Is it, um, you know, is it, um, is it uh, internal challenges, internal challenges, imposter syndrome, you know, fear of vulnerability, fear of judgment, you know, fear of even success, to be honest, or is it, um, is it, is it external challenges, lack of infrastructure and sexual harassment and workplace bullying and lack of systems and policies and of course misogynist work environment. So I would really like to know what exactly is uh, the answer. If you could start start typing in your chat. Uh, answers that would be absolutely amazing because I do want to know what's going on. Nothing. Okay. Uh, nothing is very good. That's amazing. Nothing is holding anybody back. Yes. Uh, great music as to the drama. Thank you. A country basis. It is society culture. All right. Okay, so why don't I do a, a very quick sort of a poll here? I'm waiting for the answers to come in. Zainab, if you could read out the answers to me, that would be really nice. Sure. Because I'm just... Mm. Sana Rahman is saying internal challenges more. Adil Ahmed, nothing. Zafar Saab is saying a country basis is society culture. Absolutely. Yasser Hamza, family values, culture, conservative thoughts, male dominated society. Zafar Saab, feudalism. Uh, Adil Sahab, male unconditional support is the key. Nivele, it's never one thing. Lack of personal awareness is a blocker. Yes. <laughs> uh, this, is true. this is true. I do agree with that. That. Uh, you know, we, we are, I think, living in a, and I think what is very important right now is that we are able to, okay, this is, uh, I'm going to launch a poll now. Sana and, Rahman is saying, no doubt many men support us, but uh, but a few make more challenging for us. And yes. then opportunities in the line with the strength, JJ. Yes. Absolutely. So I think that's also a problem. And I think we do need to, of course, we do have, we all have a lot of men in this, in, in our circle, but we do need to say, what is it that is, um, I mean, what exactly I personally feel from the survey that is, that I did, what is holding women back? It is basically um, in Pakistan and Asian countries, it is more like internal, I mean, sometimes it could be internal challenges, right? But most of the people who are feminist and who have encouraged them, mothers, daughters, wives, sisters, and female colleagues, they encourage women to believe in themselves, right? Which is actually a very nice thing because I, I am daughter of a feminist dad. I have feminists in my family and I'm very, very lucky because of that. And to be honest, if you ask me, I wouldn't have been able to do uh, amazingly in my career if these people were not, um, if these people were not supportive enough. So I think it is really, I've just launched the poll. So I want to, uh, you, if you could actually click on the poll and answer the question, because this is something which I really do want to know. Ladies prefer to chill and enjoy it rather than work. That's fine. That, and again, each to her own. I mean, that's, that's absolutely important. Uh, there's no judgment here. If anybody wants to chill and relax and please don't label fail supporters as feminists. Uh, well, this is the term I use. If you don't like it, then you cannot use them. You're most welcome not to use the term. Uh, but yes, uh, in the Western world, uh, we, men who support women are known as feminists. And please, uh, and, I, and I do know the reason why you're saying this, the, because I think when feminists have earned a very bad reputation in our country, unfortunately, in the last few years, because uh, they have, some. sometimes I feel that, you know, sometimes the cultural um, and the religion has not been taken into account because of which Feminism has been given a bad name. And so I think that's that's absolutely true. I do understand this. If I could have more people uh, voting, please. Culture, lots of women actually work equally hard in fields. Yes. 
in our rural culture loss. Yes, absolutely, that's true. There, it is, uh, it is. But you know what? In the rural culture, it's actually quite sad that the women who are working hard do not get paid in. Uh, you know, in, in line with what they are working at. So again, this is a hard reality which we need to create dialogue on, which we need to discuss. Language use is a barrier as Adil demonstrates. Okay, so I do understand what you're trying to say. Uh, okay, let's say that, you know, women who encourage men, modern men, I call them modern men, or I call them male allies. Uh, so maybe that's a better word for you if you prefer male allies and male, um, you know, the modern male allies, as you would say. No, uh, see, the thing is, again, I don't know if you know me well, but if you look at my, uh, you know, webinars, and if you look at my work, there is nothing, there's no such thing as them versus um, the them versus us. It is, I talk about male allies, so let's talk about, okay, let's talk about male allies then. Do you like the word male allies? What do you think about it? Okay, so the results of the poll are out, and it says both internal challenges and external challenges, which is very interesting. Uh, yes, I think it could be actually simultaneously both of them. I do agree that it could be both of them. Now, I want you, I'm going to, uh, now what I'm going to do is, what I want you to do is, I'm going to now create, um, okay, wait, why don't I see the breakout rooms? Okay, so I'm going to now uh, divide, how many people are we there? There are 13 participants. So I'm going to divide you people into like four rooms. Okay, so what will happen is you will automatically go to your, um, you will automatically go to your breakout rooms. And in this, you're going to have a very short discussion on what you think uh, your organization is doing or what you are doing as a male ally to support, I'm not using the word feminist here, yeah? I'm going to use the word male ally. And what are you using? Patrons and allies, uh, patrons rather than allies. Okay, oh, I use the word male allies. I think it's, it's fine, but you can use the word patron. You can use whatever word you want to. You're most welcome to. Uh, I think let's not get into language. I do understand and appreciate and acknowledge the point that language does sometimes create barriers in the mind of people. I am going to take your point in, but I'm going to call them male allies. Okay, so, uh, all right. Uh, whether you are male allies, whether you're male patrons, or whether you are organization leaders, I want you to have a quick discussion in your rooms uh, to decide what exactly it is that you are doing in your organization. So you will be automatically created into rooms, and I want you to have a quick discussion, and I want one uh, lead moderator to sum up the discussion for me in the chat room, which I would request Zainab to share the discussions with me once they have been uh, written in the chat box. But I do want you to very quickly, you have like literally very short time because we don't have a lot of time left. Uh, okay, all right, there you go. You need to join the rooms. Guys, you need to join the rooms. You need to join the breakout rooms, please. Okay. So basically you have a, a very short time, I think. You can write in your chat boxes, you can discuss within yourselves. As you can see, it's a very short, short sort of a thing. Okay, that's good. If the moderator can speak up for themselves, that would be great. Okay, so that was a very short sort of a breakout room. Did you get to talk? Did you did you discuss anything at all? 
Do you want to go back in the breakout rooms? No, actually, in our in our group, there were only two people, Adil Saab and me. So I don't oh. know what happened to Rajat. And I think many people didn't know that they need to unmute to get into the talking mode. So oh, I think for 30 seconds, we were waiting, wondering what's happening, and nothing was happening, so we started talking. Okay, so should we, should we, uh, were you talking to each other? Were you talking to each other, Zafir Yeah, 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 yeah. So were you discussing what the, the question I asked, or were you doing some other chit-chat? No, before we could really get a feel of what's going on, the time was up. Okay, so let me, okay, I'm going to send you back again. Actually, uh, here are the question didn't come in, the question didn't come up. And okay, again, okay. you know, we did not unmute also at the same time. Okay, so can you unmute, please, everybody? I'm going to be sending you back to your rooms now, all right? I'm going to send you back to your rooms and I'm going to give you approximately two minutes, okay? And there's the countdown timer and allow participants to return to notify me, okay? All right. Okay, um, there you go. Hello, Hera, are we back? Yes, no, you are not back. Only you are back. <laughs> the rest <laughs> of the people are in the break. Ajah, mujhe, mujhe ye hai ki aapki se hoti hai, wo England mein. Did you know that? I am pretty much in touch with her. Bilkul. Well, I am very 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 do you remember we used to come to your house and you used to give us these amazing sandwiches? Yes. No, <laughs> 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 but it's going on a magazine. There's a very good editorial group and they're taking it forward. Okay, that's great. That's very good. And I, I'm, I'm collaborating. I'm collaborating. Sorry? Okay, the breakout room. Zafar Saab is, is in, the, in the separate breakout room. Well, yeah, the Zoom is tossing me around, so I really don't know. I'm in here with you right now. You know, I think we are an open channel. But uh, you be, you'll be happy to know that Khalid Mahmood and I are uh, collaborating on biographies. Oh, very good. That's really nice. You are you on LinkedIn, Adil Sab? I'll, I'll add you later, and inshallah, I'll have a conversation with you. Are you on I LinkedIn? am yes. I am on LinkedIn, though not very active. I haven't updated my LinkedIn in a very long time. Okay. <laughs> Kitab is basically online now. It's a PDF version. I am going to share the link. So you have to email me uh, and then I can send you the, the PDF version because the, the actual version is not really uh, available right now in Pakistan. Unfortunately, it was supposed to be available this year, but couldn't happen. Are you looking? Do you, do you have a publisher in Pakistan? No, I don't have a publisher. So if you do have any publisher in mind, don't tell me that. Absolutely. I was talking to uh, what do you call um, this uh, publishing company, but uh, it didn't really. Um, I, it just fizzled out because of the you know the conference that happened this year and because of the whole virus thing. Well, if you send me a PDF copy, I'll share it with Amina Sayed, who is freelancing these days, and she's looking for young upcoming Pakistani authors like yourself. Oh, okay. So, or up to, you know, she's no longer with OUP. She's now launched out on her own as a freelancer. So, as a publisher. So, or up to print on demand, eh? you don't have to get 100,000 copies printed oh. in the first run. You know, you uh, print it as you get paid, you know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's very good. Um, I think I, I'll email you. I'll email you. We'll be in touch, inshallah. Very good. Okay, so are we done here? No, uh, what, what yeah, the breakout room is done and the webinar is going to be done in, in another 25 minutes. We still, you still have to stay on and listen to me talk. 
but you know ye ye ek issue if you haven't touched already on it uh, on in your book you must look at this ki jo emotional mindset hai na ek uh, khatoon ka ek female ka does that permit her to take the hard decisions during crunch time you will be surprised adil saab in the last few months it's it is these these female prime ministers in these countries leading the covid a uh, crisis jo ki sab they are all females i think alamia has given this alamia has blessed this and i'm not again starting a gender war here but uh, we, alamia has really blessed women with with a lot of positive traits which actually make her a very suitable person in 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 a crisis position in a, in a in a crisis situation so if you look at all the female leaders in different countries Uh, you will see that most of them that the, those who are doing really well in managing the covid crisis are all females yeah, okay everybody is going to is back now so sana would you want to talk uh, for a minute we don't have much time so i'll just give you very uh, you know sana do you want to come back and talk about uh, what was discussed yeah i have a, yeah i have a few words uh, to enlighten on the topic that we, we were discussing one is this definitely women don't have the uh, emotional mind whoever is serving within an organization you know, having ample experience because waqt ke saath saath you have got so much mature that you have uh, stop thinking from your emotional mind but from rational as well as from your empathic mind uh, the uh, women uh, prime minister you were talking about hera uh, germany ho gaya aapka jo aapka germany ho gaya australia ho gaya theek hai na I was reading a few couple of articles on uh, these prime minister, and they were like, uh, they are not uh, improving, and they are not uh, actually uh, improving the state of COVID within their country just because of emotional mind, but compassion, uh, compassionate uh, uh, emotion, and a uh, compassion के साथ लेके चलेंगे ठीक है ना? तो वहाँ पर भी they have all the skills, but the only difference from men is this: they have their compassionate. you know empathy or compassion ko leke jo wo isko drive kar rahe the and they have given so good results theek hai uh, women uh, me myself working from 10 years i have not got so much emotional but definitely i have got rational i think or empathic sath aap soch rahe ho to thoda sa difference aa raha tha male opinion se aur jo ek cheez hoti hai ki stereotype karne wali jo cheez hoti hai we women don't do we are like this ki okay think uh, in this direction ye bhi ek uh, ऑप्शन हो सकता है ठीक है आउटसाइड द बॉक्स या अदर देन द सेम परस्पेक्टिव उससे हटके हम जो देख रहे थे तो आई बिलीव ऑर्गेनाइजेशन आर डूइंग बट थोड़ा सा भी टाइम और लगेगा बिकॉज वी आर रेस्ड इन दिस सोसाइटी एज अ मेल डोमिनेटिंग सोसाइटी चीजें चेंज हो रही हैं एंड आई रियली अप्रिशिएट दो मैन जो कि जो है फीमेल को सपोर्ट करते हैं और बहुत सारे कर भी रहे हैं और इनिशियटिव में आना भी चाहता है बट इट नीड अ बिट ऑफ अ टाइम एज वेल थैंक यू सो मच सना Uh, if anybody else wants to share, because I quickly want to now move to the slide, or if you want to share in the chat box, uh, if if there's anybody else who wants to share, moderators, okay, uh, is there anybody who wants to share? Okay, so I'm going to now move on to my very quickly move on to my presentation, and I am going to talk about some of the ways where or what organizations can do about it. So basically. Uh, very very simple steps start creating awareness start with the dialogue because i am a huge fan of creating dialogue also what sana said that uh, you know traditionally a lot of women at the top have been adopting a macho mindset and they they think being strong and being you know very aggressive is going to help them get to the top but now even that landscape is changing and women have realized that they have amazing characteristics such as empathy and compassion um and you know delegation and, and humility because of which they are doing better than and then a lot of other leaders uh, and going forward this is going to be important especially the post covid crisis empathy is going to be super important i can't really emphasize how important it is going to be because everybody is going to be impacted by mental health issues everybody is going to be grieving losses of a job of relationships of money of everything else and the thing which we need to do is and being kind is not doesn't mean that you're not firm so that's another thing which i want to clarify that being a kind and empathetic woman does not mean that you're not able to take firm decisions it just means that you're able to take firm decisions but you do it with consideration and empathy in whatever you do all right talk about microaggressions what are the microaggressions again things like sweet darling hun you know 
these are uh, and pakistan mein shayad itna na use hote ho but you know these are all subtle microaggressions or saying acha tum to bachchi ho or tum you know you know things like you know ki tum to kal ki bachchi ho tumhe nahi pata on things you know that i'm speaking in urdu and hopefully everybody is going to understand except nivel but things like you know you are probably these are all sort of that has to do with us and try to from islamic point of view as mother nature or mother yes absolutely i have also read about this i have a partner who talks about mother nature and mother earth uh, her name is gul khan and i think you're absolutely right i would love to hear about your uh, research later on then encourage share expectations and behaviors by your networks and safe spaces you know don't make a person a woman uncomfortable please like you know i know a lot of me men mean well but especially in pakistan it really really matters to give women their space their physical space you know um, so even here in uk if i am not comfortable in shaking hands then i won't shake hands if i am not comfortable in embracing then i won't be doing that and i think the more you make it aware both men and women what you are comfortable with uh, and what you're not comfortable with the better it's going to be right and the anything sessions leadership would have sessions with only women and they could uh, you know get their feedback as to what exactly is happening in the organization and how could they improve or they could have anonymous surveys and feedback all right and uh, encourage leaders to share their, their personal stories and see the thing is a lot of things like microaggressions right things which are seemingly meant to be well, to be well intentioned but they do play or mess up with a woman's mind these things need to be discussed openly and these things need to be said openly so that men and women both know that what you are actually doing as 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 a you know as a, a you know fatherly figure or elderly person or whatever it is whatever language you're using or whatever gestures you're making use of they need to be avoided and the more you share it and the more you make it public the more people will know because honestly a lot of people do things unintentionally so once you create the awareness is better a pro women system you know encourage a work environment that protects women and also minorities if you have in your organization from bullying sexism and harassment sexual harassment policies really need to be spot on you need to work with ngos you need to work with consultants uh, you know and 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 get that policy completely drilled in your organization you know advocate for pro women laws elicit support from men as men allies and also reverse mentoring is a great thing in which younger junior women are mentors to senior men and then they teach them their experience and they share, they share their problems and what exactly they're facing uh, so then that really helps so reverse mentoring is really popular in uk now it is also been used to encourage diversity when senior people are often paired up with junior people and junior people are actually the mentors and they tell them that this is the problems we are facing and this is what we can do differently so all this is important a leadership role is very important it has to come from the top okay and create inclusive networking opportunities because a lot of women are married they go back home to their kids after 5 o'clock or a lot of women even if they're not married may want to go back home and not uh, you know want to uh, indulge in networking opportunities so create inclusive networking opportunities i remember when i was in get spawn home and i was in mulla and pips Uh, we used to have family days out, and that was amazing because that was the time when I could actually, you know, take. I wasn't married at that time, but when I could, you know, take my parents or my siblings or take the entire family. So inclusive networking opportunities. I do know that a lot of organizations do have these sort of um, initiatives, which are really good. Organization policies need to reflect gender parity too. You need to check for overt and covert bias. Uh, you know, a, a good thing is sometimes you just give resumes without. the names and the pictures and you only let them screen on the basis of merit and that will make a difference and that will actually get rid of the covert bias i have a lot of articles on this i will be sharing a resource toolkit so if you want to learn learn more you can learn about that i'll share that with uktara and uktara can email you that resource toolkit a whole manager is responsible for diversity decisions and make sure there is no conscious and unconscious bias because i think the problem is that a lot of us because the way we have been raised because the way we have been conditioned we are prone to unconscious bias okay identify female talent and if there is female talent especially between the ages of 24 to 28 who you think are going to be you know a uh, a great asset to your company then sit with them and if supposing if they're getting married or if they're having kids then have a chat with them how exactly can you facilitate them i remember when i got married i remember my hr director said to me uh, and he knew my husband very well he came to my wedding and i thought it was a really nice thing and this was back in pakistan and he said to me you know you are abela you got married so i think 
probably maybe you know you should leave on time in the first few days just to make it comfortable for you and just to make sure that you adjust properly and i thought that was made a huge world of difference to me because yes i was married i was in a different sort of a situation and the fact that he was actually considering it was meant a lot to me right so things like that that if you have identifying female talent who are going to have children of course they will who are going to get married of course they will most of them will then have a chat with them how can they support how can you introduce flexi time and how can you introduce job sharing or work from home options what is it what you can do about on site child care oh my god i'm not proud of this i did mis- uh, i didn't find a mistake anyways work from home options now covid 19 more than ever has proved that you have option to work from home so do work from home if if you can allow women to work from home while they can take care of their families why not while they take care of their young babies or young children then why not covid 19 has actually proved that this has been very essential uh, you know we have like you know under crisis we've all worked from home men and women introduce so on site child care if you can introduce this i know some organizations do it if you can do it it is a great peace of mind for women who have kids especially you know of allow parenting leave and make sure that you give fathers also time out for leave this is so important that is one of the single greatest uh, steps you can take towards gender equality is that you not only give parenting leaves to moms or maternity leaves to moms but you give parenting leaves to dads and you encourage them to avail those parenting leaves so that uh, you know at home it is the burden is shared of course have wage disparity audit see if your women are getting as much as your men are because in uk this has been a huge thing there have been lots of wage disparity audits as male allies what can you do you can give credit to women because a lot of time you know women uh, it, it's it's a strategy known as amplification in the white house uh, and basically what happens that if in a meeting if a woman is being talked down or if if a woman's idea idea is not being given respect or emphasis and these micro sponsors these male uh, sponsors or male allies or male patrons whatever you want to call them they would speak on behalf of the female colleagues and they will amplify their voice and they will give credit where due come back repeating because sometimes i don't know if this happens in pakistan now it used to happen back then and it definitely happens in the west now that if a woman says something people will not take seriously but after 5 minutes if a man proposes something then it is again you know it's given a lot of emphasis and credit so make sure you prevent you know repeating of things if a woman has already said it give credit to her listen to women don't make assumptions if a woman is saying that she is being harassed or bullied at work listen to her do not come up with that system or oh, she has provoked it she has called for it get rid of that thinking don't make assumptions don't make assumptions about a career too she might be a woman who is ambitious who wants to work so don't assume that you know she doesn't want to you know she now she has kids or she's married so she doesn't want to continue her career involve her talk to her create a dialogue advocate for women at work share office housework it is usually seen that you know at at office women are usually said to uh you know serve the tv <laughs> serve tea or make photocopy or do all the womenly tasks as a man, man step up and do it. share the office housework you know all that housework which typically women women are supposed to do you do it too that will give her a great ease of mind that we really support her share parental duties do take parental leave if you're a father i strongly encourage you to take parental leave and support your wife at home respect women's space give her the boundaries you know and i think in pakistan i think this is amazing because I, usually you don't have a problem but avoid using diminutives or avoid using derogatory uh, condescending language or terms for women or labels for women okay do not judge her on her appearance or her physical appearance do not tell a woman please you look beautiful you look charming you you know all these things this makes a woman extremely uncomfortable praise her work as much as you want but please try and refrain from commenting on her physical appearance um and then of course give her space give her that room especially if you're working in a male dom- dominated environment where you know she might want to use the restroom she might want to you know go to the prayer room so give her that space give her the privacy and of course the last thing which is really important is mentor boys and girls because if we don't start if you want to fight the misogyny if you want to mind side fight the mindset and the culture you as a father you as a mother need to start mentoring your boys and girls right now do you know rwanda which was an african country which was really low in gender a uh, pay gap has now suddenly come up and and one of the things which they did was they did role plays at home and schools where they encouraged boys 
to do the sh you know the homework with their sisters and they encourage boys to question their mother why is it that her education has get, given emphasis and not mine so raise boys who are able to identify these inequalities and support women so this is what it is if you want to purchase a copy of my book please feel free, uh, free to email me at here at advancingyourpotential.com to purchase a copy of the book. And I, it is for rupees 500 right now. I'm going to send you an invoice because PayPal doesn't work. I'm going to send an invoice to you. If you want to purchase it, um, I'm going to email me, please, and I'm going to send the invoice to you and you can pay it through there. And of course, this week is Mental Health Awareness Week in UK, so I do want you to be kind to yourselves first and to the rest of the people, irrespective of gender and background. These are some of my social media sites. If you want to follow me, um, please do so. And I would now like to hand it over to everybody else. Uh, yes, can I have um, people coming in now? Because this is it from my side. Uh, Zainab, uh, yeah. Yes, before, I mean, uh, I. Are you going to say the closing words? I'm going to say something in the very last, but I encourage you to come on, to go ahead. Okay. Is there any like questions coming up? Do you, anyone want to ask something so they can like unmute their mic and ask? Wait, and then... I, I, still, I still have an issue with the title of the book. He wants to change it to read his way to the top. publisher, simple si hypothesis hai, ke empowering ka jo act hai, wo male se female ko hota hai. Ab hota kya hai ke once the female gets empowered, she then loses the context. Over jo hai seeing, aur ek tarah se natural hai ke you know, jab aap seeing ladayenge, ab aap nikla hai na field mein, to you need to know hold your own. So who is your sparring partner? The poor male who has empowered you in the first place. So sabse pehle to we get, we the empowerers get the raw end of the deal because you need to practice before you can take on others. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, this, let's, let's, talk, let's talk about the real world. We are all happily married people for decades. <laughs> and we know who rules. <laughs> well, let, like they say, to each his own experience. Um, it's been uh, you know, an hour and a half, and I think um, we must thank um, uh, Hira for having um, you know, the stamina and uh, the content uh, that has kept us engaged for such a long time. Uh, we're all going through a different experience uh, uh, after this uh, COVID-19, and uh, you know the technical, the technicalities are still yet to be mastered. But uh, you know, I think uh, Hira, you did a very good job at handling uh, both Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, and uh, you know also the discussion that uh, was going on with the very difficult questions thrown in by Mr. Adil Ahmed. <laughs> So, uh, uh, really, uh, from uh, on behalf of Octara, thank you very much. Uh, we um, uh, are very, uh, we feel great pride, pride in knowing that you know you, a Pakistani girl, have risen to the top, and uh, you can stand, uh, you know, shoulder to shoulder with any any Westernized uh, or you know educated lady uh, out there in the West. So, you know, we are very proud of you, and we wish you all the best. Uh, and uh, we are looking forward not only to this book, but we. Are looking forward to many other books that you will write as you go along in life, you know. So, well done and uh, mashallah, congratulations for the book. Thank and you thank so you much. once again. I would also like to thank all the participants for having taken time out to come and spend an hour and a half over here today. I was a little disappointed with the number of people, uh, yeah, you know, I was, I was looking at the, at the number of uh, people participating, and you know, surprisingly, just out of 15 or 16, only six or seven were girls, see. Again, that's an issue with, with regards to the opportunities are there. You know, you provided the opportunity, we provided the opportunity. We sent out mail to a lot of ladies uh, in, our, in our network, uh, but maybe they, they're busy cooking the meat for their families, you know. <laughs> that's one disadvantage. Zoom, it is not quite as widespread as we would like it to be. So maybe there's a technological issue also why we don't have people. No, but we're also you know? in Facebook. We're also in Facebook. You know, Facebook has...
has a sizable number of, of, of uh, women participants should have you know come across i guess no, they're I all think busy. They're still learning our people are mm. still learning to mm. feel comfortable with the technology and using mm. it as a powerful communication set but great job yeah. done hera thank you so much thank you so much yes ma'am thank you very much really again thanks uh, thanks to all the participants who have been uh, contributing their questions or uh, in 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 this uh, uh, webinar and um, i would like to also thank the octara team uh, who put this together zainab aisha sarim uh, who were you know behind the scenes uh, you know it's like movies in the movies you know uh, the, the hero gets uh, all the credit and nobody realizes that you know the credit should be given to all those people who are behind the stage you see who, who brought it and delivered the program so thanks a lot to uh, our team and uh, participants and once again hera thank you very much uh, you're in england so it's uh, i think uh, still getting to be you know around uh, noon time over there yes it's 11:30 right now okay so you know we'll 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 let you go you've had a long day thank you very much again thank you Okay. Um, I just want to thank everybody, particularly Uktara. I did thank in the beginning as well, but Zainab mm -hmm. and you know Sarim and Aisha, uh, they have done such a huge, huge, huge uh, contribution in this putting this up. Because as you know, I do a lot of webinars, but I don't do a lot of you know these things. And Zainab really, really helped me. So thank you so much. I couldn't have pulled it together with your help, without your promos, without everything that you did. So I am really looking forward to you know working again with you guys for sure. Ah, so we are there. Thank you, yeah. Nivel. Thank you, Nivel. I can't see you, but thank you so much for attending. I can see you, <laughs> Sana and Yasser and Farhat and Saklen. Thank you for attending the webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you. Adasa is doing thumbs up. <laughs> thank you, Adasa. I'll be in touch. आपको भी तो लेके आना है ना टीम में रोल में as a male ally. I'm already home. I'm already there. Okay. आप मेरी क्रेडेंशियल्स मांगेंगी तो वो भी मैं पेश करने को तैयार हूँ No, no, you definitely. I know. I worked with you. I worked with you what, 14 years back. So I definitely know you are one of them. Thank you very much. Thank you for an amazing session. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you, Zafar Sab. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Zafar Sab. I really appreciate you. Bye bye. Bye.